Hey there, Stevens Creek. Thanks for joining us in this study of the book of Acts. If we haven't met yet, my name is Megan, and today we're going to look at Acts chapter 7. To understand this chapter, we have to back up just a bit into chapter 6. So the religious leaders had planted witnesses to lie in court about a man named Stephen. Stephen loved God, and he went around teaching about the love of Jesus. And so at the end of chapter six, the religious leaders make lots of accusations against Stephen. And then to start chapter seven, they say, okay, Stephen, what do you have to say about all that? And then the bulk of chapter seven, actually verses one through 47, are Stephen retelling the story of the incredible faithfulness of God to humanity and specifically to the Israelites. He tells the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Joshua and even King David. He recounts miracle after miracle that God performed in order to prove his love and to protect the people and provide for them against all kinds of odds. Then in verse 48, Stephen shifts the focus of the narrative and starts telling these religious folks how hypocritical they are. He's angry with them because of their resistance to the Holy Spirit. And he points out that they had picked apart every single prophet that had ever stood before them. They killed all the ones who foretold that Jesus the Messiah was coming. And then these same religious thugs killed Jesus. He finishes by saying in verse 53, You have received the law under the direction of angels and yet have not kept it. Now, what I think he's saying in modern English is more like, what do you expect me to say? God's already told you what's right and wrong. You already know in your heart and you just do whatever you want anyway. So let's keep going. Verse 54 says, When they heard these things, they were enraged in their hearts and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled by the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. He saw God's glory with Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they screamed at the top of their voices. They stopped their ears and rushed together against him. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They were stoning Stephen as he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And saying this, he fell asleep. This story is so powerful and such an important moment because this is the record of the first martyr for our faith. The first person to die because he preached about Jesus. It was brutal. It was slow and agonizing and vicious, but notice it also had a very significant young witness. Look back at verse 58. It mentions a boy named Saul. He's standing over to the side. He's watching the jackets and book bags of all these religious thugs. He's essentially the getaway driver. Maybe he knew exactly what he was getting into, or maybe he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and got roped into a crazy situation. But this very violent event makes an imprint on Saul's life. We didn't have to know this detail, but I love that it is put into scripture for our benefit. I believe wholeheartedly that this scripture explains one of the hardest questions we ever face as humans and certainly as believers. Why do bad things happen to good people? I am convinced that God allowed this physically painful experience so that it would resonate with Saul for a greater good yet to come. Now, God didn't sacrifice Stephen, so remember that. Stephen committed his spirit to the Lord and even asked God to forgive the very people who were actively murdering him. But God could see the full scope of what Saul needed to witness in order to have the courage to become the man of God that he would later be. Just so you know, later in Acts, Saul's name is actually changed to Paul the Apostle, and he becomes one of the greatest church planners and missionaries for Christ in the history of the world. He went on to write one of the, or most of the New Testament. And all that started right here in Acts chapter 7. As Pastor Marty always said, God never wastes a pain. And I'm praying for you today that you can begin to see your areas of pain as places that God is using for a greater good yet to come. It's a difficult perspective to have at times. It's very difficult. And I'm not asking you to deny that you have pain, but I do pray that this perspective shift will lead us to a heart position of gratitude and joy no matter what our circumstances are. I wanna pray those things together right now. 
God, we ask that you would open our eyes to see the areas of pain in our life as pieces that you are using to write a better story. Thank you that you are God of the greater good. Thank you that you never waste the hardships and discomfort in our life, but instead you are consistently using them to grow us and to grow others to be more like you. Help us to look for those lessons in the hard seasons and in the middle of our pain. God, we don't want to pretend like our frustration and wounds aren't real or they don't matter, but Lord, give us a heart position of gratitude and joy in every season. We thank you, just like we read in Acts 7, that you are faithful and you are loving and you will prove yourself over and over again and we can trust that you will continue to do so. In your strong name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for being with us on this devotional journey. I hope that you'll tune in again tomorrow and listen for more.